Hi, everybody. Welcome to another edition of A Lot of Help. I'm James Law Jr., and I'm here to help. And we're at home, you know, because of this, the social isolation. I was a social distance, solo <laughs> isolation. And we're at home, and I'm creating content for you to keep your mind off of exactly everything that's going on out there. Uh, so I've been doing videos, I've been doing audio. Just, you know, follow me at James Law Jr. everywhere, and you'll get to see everything. And I bring it on my, as you can see, on the, to, the, to the left of me, I guess, or the right of me. I don't know what's going on. Um, he is my frequent collaborator and friend. And we're going to explain some of the things that we're doing together and talk about life just in general as an entrepreneur yeah. during this time period and some things that we're working on that you might be interested in. So I want to introduce my friend, author, NLP practitioner, house flipper, everything, Caesar Arespino. Hi, Caesar. Hey, James. How are you? I'm Thanks hanging in there, me. folks. That's the question. Everybody says, how are you? You're like, how are we? I'm actually, I'm fine. I I'm I'm wonderful. I mean, as you can see, I'm doing good. I'm I'm right next to the beach. You know, I mean, I'm wonderful. I love that background. <laughs> Folks, this is my real house background. I have a keyboard, a, a light. These are all the things I use to make stuff for you guys. So it's, I, that's real life for me. Um, and but you know, if I ask, how, so how this is my first time seeing you since the yeah. the, the lockdown has happened. How are you? <clears throat> Well, you know, you know, again, I think uh, very similar to like what a lot of people are going through, right? I mean, it's just kind of like a little bit of uncertainty, not knowing where this is going to take us or where this is going to lead us. Um, at the end of the day, though, I'm also taking this time to reflect on different things and say, okay, what can I do? You know, and, and, and for me, that's exactly what it is. It's like, what, how can I get creative on doing something, something different? So although things have changed a little bit because we're confined to our home and we cannot go out and do different things. You know, I'm, I'm taking this time to do more, I guess. I want to tell people, because you live in a house, too. I am very fortunate. I live in a house. Yep. I have a yard, a yep. front and backyard. I've been out there. I'll be out there again today, later. Um, so I know how fortunate I am that I'm not, luckily, I'm not confined in a small apartment, which I used to live in a studio apartment. I don't know what that's like. Um, so I'm very, I know I'm very fortunate. But I hope folks out there are trying to stay sane and... And I've seen people go buck wild now. They're going crazy. And they can't stay in the house. They can't be you know, going crazy. But we really have to work on this because the epidemic is getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, a pandemic. And it's, we need to, like, do what we can to help. Well, and, and, and that's funny. I mean, you, you mentioned that. I mean, it goes back to the, we were talking about this right before we, we jumped on this. If, when you look at the, the numbers and you look at, you know, how bad this thing is spreading, you know, just overnight or over two, three days, it, it just really spreading to a whole new level and um and yeah i mean i, I know as much as people cannot stay in, in indoors you know i see people are, they're going out hiking they're going to the park they're doing all this stuff and and that's all all good and dandy you know if it was all in normal circumstances but the fact that we're going through this right now we as humankind need to do the right thing for not only ourselves but for other people and just make sure that we do our part um we're, we're both in, in in la so um, I'm obviously the city of LA, you're in the city of Inglewood. Either way, the mayor of LA put out a post this morning saying, Hey, you know, we, we saw a lot of people that were in the parks and, um, uh, you know, parking on the beach, uh, doing all these different things. When we asked people to not go out unless it was due to essential items, now that you guys are not taking this serious, we're gonna have to close down the parks, we're gonna have to make sure that we chain up the, the, the parking lots for the beaches, we're gonna start giving misdemeanors or something to that effect. And to an extent, it's sad that we're getting to that point, yeah, we need to do that because we need to contain that virus. I think people, you know, I could go on a rant on this forever. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I, how selfish people are. But I think, I think it's a larger <laughs> question, that, a larger point is that people don't like being told what to do, that's number one, mm -hmm. and number two, this is this is very new for us in this right. country. In this country, we're not used to having lockdowns. We're not used to being told don't go outside. It makes people go, well, I want to go outside. You know, I can't go outside. I want to go outside. Like it makes it's, it works on our psyche. So it's a big psychological shift that's happening that must be very strange for folks. To me, it was a very simple choice: stay home. Okay, stay home. I mean, I don't, I don't, I right. don't fight it. Um, I don't. I have not been out in a week. As we're as we're filming this, I have not been out in a week. And so, I mean, I've been outside my yard, I haven't yeah. gone to the store, I haven't gone to the bank, I haven't gone to the park, you know, it's like, I mean, they have stuff that people are doing, and I'm like, because I did all that, I did a preparation for the lockdown, mm -hmm. right, so I was like, well, let me get all these stuff I should get, I'm gonna organize this so I can't help it, that's what I do anyway. Yeah. Um, and then I was like, I have plenty of water, I have plenty of, the only thing I'm running out of is booze. 
Um, that's another story. Uh, <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, oh my god, I, I, no more vodka. What am I gonna do? Um, yeah. But no, but I just I've learned just to, and I, and I have plenty. I mean, I've been busy. I feel like I've been busy this whole week. I've been home. Like I've just like, I mean, in a good way. Like I've been doing things and projects, and, and I have watched. I finished The Mandalorian last night, the whole series on Disney Plus. I mm-hmm. loved it. Season two, yeah. October. I can't wait. Um, so I'm catching up on series, but I feel like. I get up in the morning, I take my pills, I, I read my, my Psalm 91, and then I start my life. And I've been really kind of, and I want to thank all of my friends in the business, outside the business, you, everybody, who are actually setting time to talk with me and create content. I think it's such a, yeah. that's what you do. Yeah, it, no, that, that's awesome. And, and I can tell you, you know, I, I don't think we as a humankind have ever gone through this, something like this that is worldwide. Yeah. Uh, and you're right, we, and as a nation, I don't think we've been confined to, a lockdown and all those not a, and that's one thing too i want to just kind of make it clear though um it's not a mandatory lockdown it's not like you're gonna go out and you know you can go out for essentials except i think also because of that people are like well it's not mandatory so i'm gonna go out and do whatever i gotta do right and so no i, I mean at the end of the day let's appreciate what we have the opportunity that we still have the ability to go out because it's going to be worse if they said it is a mandatory lockdown you cannot go out to the store you can't do anything now at that point People are going to be freaking out. At that point, people are, be going, are going to go, be going crazy. So we have to be able to take what we have right now, right? The, uh, yeah. the other thing I was going to say really quickly to that is that, uh, you, you know, you're talking about you're, you're, you have more time for yourself, right? So um, this is the perfect time for us to do something productive or, or to start doing a project or whatever the case may be instead of looking at the news, instead of sitting on the couch, instead of doing all those things that might be creating some sort of negativity in your mind. There's some, there's, a, there's a, a picture going around, like somebody had wrote, like, you don't have to write that novel. You don't have, we, don't, we know that. You don't have to do any of that stuff. But I feel like for those who feel they're too busy to try other things, now it's your time to do that. Mm-hmm. It's your time now. You've been thinking, I've been wanting to paint. Well, now you have time to paint. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I'm talking about those people who feel like they don't have enough time in the day to do the hobbies they want to do. You want to yeah. play cards. You want to do this. Like then it's like this. Now you can find you want to do. It. I'm doing a puzzle right now. I'm doing a puzzle in a long time, and yeah. I'm like, it's hard too. Um, and and I I somewhat do one. I haven't done one in a long time, and I got it. It's the Mandalorian. It's the, it's the, it's Baby Yoda, and so I decided <laughs> to get it, and I, I'm putting it together right now. And so it's been a lot of fun. Just don't do puzzles when you're drinking. <laughs> you don't get the right pieces together. Yeah, it's, a little, a little, it's a little, you're like, those don't fit. Why do I think they fought? They fit, they don't fit. It's a little, yeah. a little rough. Um, yeah. yeah, but other than that, I mean, so I'm having fun. So, so folks out there, we, you know, we both are authors. He's an author, you can overcome anything. Um, he's a contributor to another book. What's the other book you're a contributor to? So uh, it's uh, There to Be Authentic, volume five. Yeah, Lend Yourself so, to Prosper. Now he and I are doing um, a series, and, and I'm yep. going to do something with him too. So I was going to mention we, we're going to shamelessly self promote ourselves because that's what we can do. Right. Yep. In our show. Um, and so I, I thought of a series called Follow Our Lead, and um, I don't know how many books. I originally kind of thought maybe three. It could be four, five. I don't know. I mean, who knows? Um, yeah. But we, you know, my branding. If you don't know, if folks who may watch this for the first time, my branding is, is simple and easy people things. It's all about talking to straight and plain to people so you understand because nothing should be complicated right right so this book series i'm also part of the really i'm i started the really short story project and it's all about delivering shorter content that's still quality content it's still quality um so i thought this little series for us to do where and i already he already knows i've written the first book her my, my version because yeah. <laughs> i'm just crazy that way <laughs> and i'm already almost finished with the second book too i'm <laughs> just to tell you that oh i got time oh. my hands i got time so yeah yeah time. That's good. But, but, it's, but it's about being entrepreneurs because he and I are both entrepreneurs and um, we want to give you kind of an insight to what we have gone through and go through through different stages. And the first book's about becoming an entrepreneur, how, how we came to become entrepreneurs. And then the next book that I'm writing is, is I put together is about uh, being an entrepreneur, like what it's like to be one and some of the things you should look out for. And I thought, and this is, I haven't told, I haven't told Caesar this one. So the Uh-oh. third one. I'm ready for this. they ready for the third one. So the third one that I started, um, it's about keeping, I call it keeping it fresh. Mm. So once you're an entrepreneur and you've been one for a while, how do you adapt, grow, and change your business? So I'm going to tell examples yeah. about that for me. Because I've, ch- I've adapted, grown, changed, and I know you have too. So yeah. But then it's, it's, there could be other ones too. So I'm thinking, you know, a series, 
of books that are really easy for you to pick up and read and maybe learn something. And, you know, he and I are big dreamers. So we might, we might do workshops on these, you know, yeah. right? all kinds of stuff, right? Yeah, definitely. No, that's going to be exciting. And I, I can only uh, already see, you know, people taking so much uh, away from this and just getting so much value and, and really uh, enjoying that, that those books. It's going to be definitely a pretty awesome uh, project. Uh, well, you and I time. like to share our knowledge. I know you yes. have to share, we have to share our experience for people. Yeah. You yep. know, you've always been that way, right? You like to share yes. with the staff. Right. Yeah, how yeah. Important, how, important, how important is that? Oh, I think it's, it, it, it goes back to one, one of my philosophies, right? I got to get a drink. What's my I know. I'm thinking about most of you guys. I know right. it's like in the middle of the afternoon, but I have nothing going on. <laughs> right? Hey, you're not, you're not walking in, 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 I wouldn't say, you're not walking and driving. That doesn't make sense. It's like, whatever. Not, I'm, not whatever. Driving, I'm not driving anywhere. I'm home. Anyways, or walking for oh. that matter. I, I took a shower, everybody. <laughs> Yeah. Um, so anyways, I was going to say that's kind of part of my philosophy now is like at the end of the day, it's very, the, the more you help people, the more you help yourself. Right. And so I think it's very important for you to share um, ideas, aspects in many different aspects, in many different levels, because it goes back to that, that principle. Um, I think um, uh, I forget his name now. Um, it'll come to my, my to mind right now. But anyways, he was talking about, you know, if you help, you know, if, the more you help people, the more you're going to help yourself, right? And um, Zig Ziglar, there you go. He mentioned yeah, that. Ziglar, yeah, I like him. I like him. Yeah. And so to me, that, that's, that's important because a lot of people, you know, are, are even thinking or, or, or having the idea of I want to be there and then they don't have anyone to turn to. I went through that myself. As a matter of fact, you know, I'm, I'm in real estate investing. And when I started my journey back in 2005, 2006, I got into the housing market and I started buying properties, yet I didn't have anyone that I can turn to or really trust. And then when I did, they freaking took my money. Like they literally yeah. sold for me by taking my money because they didn't help me. I considered that scene. They took my money and I didn't have any means to recover from that. I lost all my houses. I, I filed uh, uh, pretty much uh, foreclosures and things like that. And my credit went to shit, you know, it just yeah. went bad. My yeah. point to this though is that, um, it's important to have and help other people, especially when you come from a background where you don't have any of that stuff. Man, I, it's very powerful. So yeah, I'm all about that. I, I had, I, I along the way have had mentors. So mm -hmm. that to me, I know you have mentors now. And I think, yeah, that, right. I think that's, so if I can, and I have, I have mentees, people that I mentor. So it's like, right. it's just, my motto, and if you guys have watched, used to watch my show Breaking Into You, my motto was to pay it forward, um, lift each other up, and oh my god, my, my third thing is can you pay for it? Let's each other up and um you just basically trust the village. Basically you helping the village. You're basically mm -hmm. you're there um to the el you, you look out for the elders, you bring up the young, you do your part for the community, and that's something that I know we both kind of believe yep. in. Yep. Right. Know, we do that. Um a thing that he and I are also working on from his side of things, we, we're back and forth on his side of things. <laughs> yeah. Um, based on this you can overcome anything, he's trying to put together uh, book series with lots of contributors mm -hmm. talking about something to help them get over something. So can you talk about that a little bit? The, 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 like, like yeah, so, so the, yeah, definitely. So, so, so my project is about, I, I'm looking for, you know, people just like James and I, we want to be able to put some content, information, ideas that can empower other people, right? And so in this book series, what I'm trying to do um, is to also have people that uh, had to overcome some sort of obstacles throughout their life. And now, they're either in the process of, or they've already accomplished something to that journey, right? They came out of, out of that, they, they overcame that obstacle and they're, they're probably still in the process because it's okay to still be in the process as long as you're still working on, on that um, end goal. So, I, so the book series is, is really about that. How, um, you know, what kind of backstory you have that you might've gone through something very, very uh, bad or, or whatever the case may be, you overcame that obstacle and now you're doing something for yourself. I think that many people can relate to that, right? And, and I got the idea, uh, James helped me a lot. I have my own podcast show, which is also You Can Overcome Anything. And a lot of the people that I have in the show have gone through a series of events in their lives from either just about ready to die, you know, because they got shot or, you know, eating disorder, whatever the case may be. And they overcame that and now they're doing something better for themselves. I think that's something that many people can relate to because people then see like, you know, uh, can I do this or not? And they're, they're, they start questioning when they see that validation is like, okay, you know what? I can do this. Authenticity is, I just sound like Hollywood is in right now. 
Uh, people want to see something and hear something real. They want, right. they want to know that um, if you can do it, I can do it too. That kind of that kind of thing. And um, people don't know where to start. Sometimes they just don't know where to start. And things and and not everybody knows everything. So people feel like, like for me being on television, like how do you get on TV? I didn't know either how to get on TV. I had no clue how that works. And so now I can share with them actual steps on how I got here. Right. So how'd you start a podcast? I can, t- I can give you, you know, and the season knows I help them with stuff. I will sit down and tell you step by step from my experience, how I got from point A to point B, because not everybody knows how, nobody, nobody, people, some things seem out of reach. Right. You know, where he and I both came from, I wouldn't imagine I was here doing this. I mean, I couldn't imagine. Right. Yeah, exactly. Not at all. So it's kind of like, we can, so we're there to help people see that we can do it. You can do it too. Still keep who you are, but we're going to share with you the good and the not so good mm-hmm. of our story because he does his book. He shares the not so good. I tell yeah. all my stuff. I cry on television. You guys know that. People watch me. Um, so I mean, we share both sides of it, and people like that. They really do. They, right. they, want, they want somebody who's like not excuse my language bullshitting you. They, yeah. they want somebody that doesn't seem slick and oily or right. icy. They want somebody they can they, they can kind of trust. Yeah. When it comes down to the, at the end of the day, you know, when you're honest and, and you're coming from a, a true uh, side of, uh, of authenticity, right. And you talked about that, you know, again, then you get, you have a better connection with, with the people, you know, we're not sure coding anything. And, and as you mentioned, you know, it, it were to look at any kind of background or anything that might've happened in the past. Again, it's actually good to know that we went to that because now we learn or we grow out of that because it's a lesson and, and you make that. And when people see that, it's like, okay, you know what? They're human beings too. They make mistakes. They, they do this, they do that, whatever the case may be. Now you can relate to that. I agree. And I think, I think it's something that people um, don't take for granted. It's like, you know, when someone talks to you in plain speak and says, I made mistakes too, that gives you permission to try something. Cause you go, oh, okay. Right. Well, he made mistakes. So, I mean, I'm not the only person. Because some people also feel like they're alone sometimes. Especially with entrepreneurship, your or sorry, solopreneurship, whatever you works you want to use. You know, you and I, we're all on one-man bands. We're doing everything. And so you're busy. You're not in an office together with colleagues. You're like, you're out on your own, like these little satellites, yeah. trying to make things happen. And sometimes you're working 18-hour days, 16-hour days, late at night, early in the morning, and you feel like you're by yourself. Right. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. you know, well, you know, yeah. it's, it's, it's a little tough. And so I try to connect to people who are like me in the business and their business, whether it's a different business or the same, because I feel like that at least every once in a while we can connect and he and I can go to lunch. We do right. things. Like, it's good to sometimes have that because we are, we don't, we're not in an office together. Right. We don't have office parties and, you know, water cooler. And all that. We don't have that. We're on our own. Yeah. Out there, yeah. Trying to work hard and make it. Um, another project that he and I have out coming out March 30th. <laughs> Folks, March 30th yeah. for sale and streaming. You better stream the F <laughs> out of it too, folks. Yes, money. we need to. Um, by Larlo and La Semana, which is our two Spanish songs. One is bilingual and one's Spanish. They're out on SoundCloud right now, my page, James Live Jr. And by Larlo's getting a lot of listens so far. And I oh, that's awesome. Spanish music, for some reason, does really well. I don't know why. It's like, it's, I don't know. Yeah. I, just, I don't know. It's just doing really well. So I want to ask you, just, just because now... We're on camera. <laughs> How do you feel when you right? Because I sent you each song separately. I sent you the first song first, and I mentioned this too. Yeah. So when you first heard yourself on by Larlo, what were some of the things you thought? Because it was your first time ever doing this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, <laughs> first is like I couldn't believe it to to an extent. And I'm like, and and then just you know, hearing myself singing and and going through that, I'm like, is that really me? Kind of thing, right? Yes. Um, and uh, and it's just a good actually it was a, a a good way to just kind of uh reflect and then like man like i i just did this right like that that it, it felt very good it felt like that self-accomplishment and, and kind of going back to what we're talking about right now anything you do you're like you feel like you may not be good for that or you might not and i'm not saying this is going to be a hit at the end of the day what i'm trying to say is that you may not feel like that is going to be a fit for you Yet when you do it and you accomplish that, it's like, wow, it wasn't that difficult after all. I mean, I can, if I can do this, like, what else can I do? Kind of thing. And it was one of those things, you know? And so, um, you know, definitely I was like just showing everybody, by the way. So I, I have a, a grandkid. He's, he's going to be eight this year. Yes. And, uh, and so I told him, hey, for your birthday party, 
you should play this song. And then I play that song. <laughs> and he's like, nope, nope, it's not going to happen. <laughs> uh, you know, but it's, it's funny. I was, I was like, I, 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 then I sent a, a text message to my mom. I sent him the music, the song. And I said, hey, mom, not only am I a book author, uh, I'm not an artist and a writer because he's giving me credit for that. Yes. Uh, yep. And um, check, check this out. It's <laughs> just uh, cracking up. It was just good, though. It was, it was really good. I enjoyed it. Yeah, we did. You know, folks out there, you know, he told me he wants to do a song of his own. And so, and I, you know, I, but if you don't know this, I do a lot of music. I, I have like four albums out. I do all this stuff. And I have a certain style. And I, we used to do a fun, just kind of like fun yeah. song. It wasn't anything super deep or anything. It was just like a dance song put out. And I have great producers. I'm going to shout out to them. And um, I had this song I was kind of writing. And we put it together. These two songs put together. And... The, I mean, people tell me they, they love Mike just because it's irreverent, it's fun, it's just like, you know, feel good, whatever. My grandson, actually, Ryland, who's, he was, he was like eight or nine when my first song came out. He loved it. He used to, he used to sing it back to me. I was like, oh, I yeah, my grandson loves my song because I, I didn't make it for the kids, I made it for us adults. But it's just, the point is, I like what you said, it's about accomplishing something. Mm -hmm. And it's like, and for me, my music is not for the charts. It's not. I'm not trying to get on MTV, whatever. I'm too to play songs anymore. But you know what I mean. I'm not, try, I'm not trying to be this huge music star, but I'm having fun being creative. Hmm. And I have folks who do like my music, who are fans of my music. And they tell me all the time. I have one girl told this. I have all your albums, James. Like you do. Like I always make a. I make it for me. And then like somebody goes, I have all your albums. I'm like you have all. You have all four of my albums. Like, <laughs> like that's, that's just crazy. Yeah. Um, and, and, but the deeper feeling is what he, what Caesar talked about, just creating and, and doing something new and yeah. being around creative people in this process. That's the bigger takeaway, right? That's the, like, cause I talked to you through the whole, how to talk into the, the right. chord and, and yeah. you didn't hear music. You just heard, you heard yourself doing the lyrics and then you hear music later added in, but you, you saw the process. Right. And, and you know, something that just triggered and, and another example of that is I, I kind of, I want to take it back to when I wrote my book, you know, almost about a year ago or so. When I did my book, at first, one thing that I was asking, telling myself is like, number one, I don't like to read. So why would I even see myself writing a book? Number two, who's going to buy my book? Who's going to want to even listen to my story? And then so you have all this negativity, all these negative, uh, you know, words or your little voice telling you, no, 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 no. And, and that, was, that was me. I was telling myself, like, what am I kidding? I'm, one, I'm not a writer. I don't like to read. No one's going to read my book or buy my book for, for, for anything. And then I was able to step out of that and say, you know what? Who cares? At the end of the day, um, I want to do it for self-accomplishment. I don't care if no one buys my book. I don't care if, if, if nobody even reads my book. The fact that I can publish a book, the fact that I can have a book that one day I can give to my family, at least one person, and I, I, and I, and I was able to accomplish that, that's going to be more than, than, than beyond anything that I can get. And when I took that mentality and that idea, you know, everything turned out to be a lot better, right? Obviously, people have bought my book. People have enjoyed my book. People are really reading it. And now, you know, so again, sometimes we, we tend to, uh, you know, get ourselves out of something because of the fear or all these little voices that we have that it might be more rewarding than you think, think about at the end of the day. And same thing with, with, the, with the song and everything, you know? I like that. And, I, and my thing, my thing is here, folks, this is something for you guys out there. Whenever you put out something, whether it's a book, a song, a workshop, uh, a poem, a TV show, a podcast, it's open to judgment. That is just mm -hmm. how it is. Mm -hmm. and it, it's just anything you put out to the public, it's open to judgment. Just like anybody say, I mean, it's like us, I judge things too. I mean, I like something mm -hmm. comes out and I judge things too. Um, once you know that, actually you're free. So just know people are going to judge it. So some folks are going to think it's horrible and it's ridiculous. And then folks are going to think it's wonderful and amazing and all in between. So to go to his point, which I like a lot, is just that I'm doing it for me. And then if one person buys it and they love it, then I, my job is done. But obviously right. we've had success in things we put right. out. Um, I do the same thing with my TV shows and podcasts. I record it because I want, it, I want the experience. I love it. And then if one person listens to it, Fine. If a hundred people listen to it, great. If a thousand, I mean, they, I mean, you know, what I mean, I can say it's even better. And I say with these videos, when I put the, when I put this video, mm -hmm. if it gets five views, shit, okay, I'm fine. If it gets a yeah. hundred five views, I'm fine. Like it's just I'm doing it because I want to. Uh, it's being creative, something we're doing together, and I do stuff with you. And then, yep, it might help 
one person see this, it might, and, it might. And, and that's all. You, and that's all it that matters. Like literally, if, if if you can change the the trajectory or, or the life of one person, that's all you need, right? I mean, at the end of the day, is is how we change this world is by impacting one person at a time. So, love that. I, it was funny recently. Not to toot my own horn, but I'm going to toot my own <laughs> horn. I, I'm, all my bells over there. I'm going to be like, never. Bell. I'm going to toot my own horn. Um, but no, I, I've, it's funny because you and I, we're yeah. almost entrepreneurs. We're out there doing our thing. We create content. I don't always know what people think about me or what their view is of me sometimes. I don't know until someone says something to me or, so, mm -hmm. or, or I'm in a certain situation. And I, like last year when I won that award, then I got to see people like, oh my, you're the OG, you're this. But I, I didn't know what people think. Yeah. So I've been noticing recently, um, some of my guests are like, or my fellow colleagues of other entrepreneurs or other organizers or other hosts, they always say, they always say, but James, you do everything. Like you're amazing. Like you, we follow <laughs> your stuff. Like we see your stuff online and you're like, you have a book and a music and a this and like, and, and so I'm fine that people see me as a hard worker, which is a great, I, I want people to see that, of course. Um, I want to see that. What do you think people, has anybody told you what they think of you? I mean, have they ever said anything to you? And like, what they, what they, how they see you as? You know, I, I don't think I have. I mean, I, I don't think I really ask. Well, I never ask. And I'm trying to see right. if anybody had mentioned anything. Have you, any, have you, any, have you any, any good, like, feedback about your, about you and your work? I guess that's a better question. I, I would, I would, I definitely got a lot, a lot more feedback, a lot better feedback than bad feedback. I had a couple of bad reviews, just like anything, oh, yeah. you know, judgment, right? Yeah. Um, except, uh, you know, I do get a lot of people that support my journey and they love what I'm doing. They enjoy the things that I'm doing. And, um, and so that actually is very empowering and very, um, uh, fulfilling, right? It gives me a lot of that. Um, so I would say for the most part, yeah, people tend to, uh, like what I'm putting in. And I think part of this is because I'm touching more people's lives in one way or the other, whether it's through my real estate, through my books, through now my podcast, um, pretty soon through the music, whatever the case may be, you know, people tend to get, uh, tend to give me good feedback on that. Um, I've got a couple of great feedback from not only my mentor just a couple of weeks back and then also people that I've been working, you know, and so that was very, very good to hear. And, and people just telling me, you know, I believe in you. Like if anyone can do it, it's you. And so that, that feels really good. Well, I'm going to give you some feedback. Oh. I'm going to tell you, so I'm going to do it for you. All right. Let's so do it. I, I think, I think, you know, I've known you now a long time, but I've known you yeah. some months now at this point. I mean, I get what I'm saying. When did, when did I meet you? Like, I know. I, I want to some time. I won't say at least six months, yeah, maybe at least six a little months. more more than that, yeah. Yeah. We met through a mutual friend. And so and luckily he lives near me, folks. That's just so funny. Yeah. We're in the yeah. same area. Like it's yeah. the same area. But kind of, that's, and LA doesn't happen in LA. In LA no one lives near each other. No. They don't. I'm, like, a, I'm like literally like like 10, 12 minutes from you. Yeah, exactly. It's like and then I work near where he lives and I'm always at the train station. I mean it's like it's really bizarre that we live that close. <laughs> in LA, you say, Where do you live? I live in Long Beach. Where do you live? I live in in Pomona. Where do you live? Yeah. I live in the valley. Like they're never they're, nobody's ever nearby. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and in my business, everybody's in the valley or they're in Hollywood. They're not down in the South Bay area. But anyway, so I would say the one thing about things I noticed about why I like, like working with you is that you are um, you think outside the box. You are a person who's eager. Mm. You're and you're open. And to me, those are two traits that I think you need to be successful in business. Um, not saying that I have all the answers or that mm -hmm. I know everything, but like you, at least you listen, you take mm -hmm. filter things in, make it work for you. And I think that's a, a great trait. Um, you're, you're hardworking, obviously you're hardworking. You're always, you feel like you're always searching mm -hmm. something. I mean, that in a good way, you're searching yeah. for something larger than you. And I think that's a trait that I admire people that do that. And you, and you do that. So those are some yeah. things. I Thank like you. No, yeah, I appreciate that. And, and, and I think once we have our book, you know, your book, our book together first, when we talk about, you know, becoming an entrepreneur, I, I'll, I'll be touching on that, but I'm, I'm going to give you a little bit of that. And, and you just said something very, very important that, that, that just triggered something. When I first left my corporate job, I, I've always been in real estate investing even before I left my job. And when I left, it was just that one thing. That's it. That's all I'm going to do, right? Now, when you open up the, the possibilities of doing multiple different things, getting into different projects, I think that your doors open up in, in many different aspects, right? And again, I never thought I was gonna be writing a book or doing a podcast or doing any of this stuff. Um, and now that I'm doing that, I feel like 
I have more opportunities in, in different aspects, right? And so you have to be open to that. Um, specifically as an entrepreneur, you have to have the ability to say, you know what, I'm going to try different things. And uh, my mentor says, keep throwing noodles uh, to the wall and see what sticks. I just say, and, I say it too, yes. Right? Yeah. And so, you know, just keep doing that. You know? So that's pretty, pretty awesome. Yeah, I, I agree with that too. And I think, you know, try it doesn't work, life goes on. I've had some, I don't call them failures because I don't believe the word fail. I don't believe they're not fail. Everything is just what happens, happens. But I had some things that didn't take off. Lessons. I had some things that, what'd you say? Uh, lessons. Lessons, they're lessons. Yeah. And I had a few things that I thought I was gonna try and they didn't launch and there's reasons why they didn't launch. There were opportunities that came to me that I wanted so bad and then didn't get them. And I realized they weren't the right fit later. Like they weren't mm -hmm. really good for my brand maybe and kind of stuff. So I, I just kind of, so I've just learned that the world keeps spinning and turning and turning and spinning and turning. And so you gotta just gotta get on that, that wheel and then just, and, just, and then try what you can. And then whatever doesn't work, doesn't work. And whatever works, go run with it. I mean, that's kind mm -hmm. of the, the thing. And in my business, I've just, I've been so fortunate to have, so many different opportunities that I, again, never imagined. I'll talk about this in the book, of course, in both our books that we're going to do, mm -hmm. um, that I just never imagined. And being open brings stuff to you. Mm. That you know this, I know this. That's just, that's just, I mean, it's like, it's just, it's just like when you're like, hmm. I mean, it's good to be specific. It's good to have targets. Well, right. <clears throat> they, they, they have to definitely be. I mean, don't just do anything because then, right. because then that's going to turn out to uh, um, decimal watch, decimal What's the name? Washington. What is that actor? Denzel Washington. That guy. Yeah. Um, he yeah, talked guy. about Denzel, that guy. Yes, that guy. Yes. Denzel yeah, Washington. Yeah. Denzel. Yeah. There you go. Denzel Washington. He, he talked about uh, just because you're busy doesn't mean that you're that that you're productive. You're creating something, right? So again, you cannot just go out and do a bunch of different things and just I hope that something's gonna stick. You have to be. It has to be calculated. It has to be precise. It has to be, you have to have a motive. You have to have a reason of why you're doing something. And so for me, I'll give an example. Like again, yes, real estate is my primary focus. Yet for me, writing my book, doing, uh, you know, these projects with you, doing the podcast, doing all, all these different things is part of my mission. It's part of my, um, uh, what I consider to be my highest intention. My highest intention is, is based on three different things. And everything that I do is based on those three things. And you got to find the same thing for you. For me is I want to empower people. I want to inspire people and I want to aspire people. So if I can do that and I'm doing it through, through, through what I'm doing, through connecting with people like you to all the stuff that I'm doing. So you have to have to have a, a, a an intention or a vision for you. And then whatever comes out through that, then it all connects. Literally everything that I'm doing now is actually intertwined. It's connecting one or the other. So. Same here. You said it very well. I'm going to say my intention is to affect positive change in the world. That's always my there intention. You go. Yep. So everything that I do, if you look at anything that I do, it's all positive. I don't do anything that's negative or that's super crazy or, you know, I, everything. Well, you I, do a lot of crazy stuff. I mean, well, you know, you're on TikTok, you're on Snapchat, you're on LinkedIn, you're on Facebook. That's kind of crazy, right? <laughs> I'm everywhere, yes. James Lott Jr. is everywhere. As my friend says, I do a lot. Thank yeah. You, <laughs> there you go. Uh, a a lot. lot. You do a lot. Sorry, my With two T's. <laughs> With two T's, not one. Um, but no, but I, you know, but my thing is, I don't, all the things that I do, like you, they're inter even my music, it's still intertwined, it's still pop yeah. music. It's music that makes you either, I, I do have songs that are deep, um, that make you think. My last album just came out, um, that I had it out, um, Salty Cloud, Sunflower Dreams. That came from my Bell's palsy time period when I was completely mm. face paralyzed, completely upset. And some of those songs came from the heart, like came from my heart, like directly, and how I saw the world. But again, it's still all positive music. Mm -hmm. And so my books are positive. My music is positive. My podcasts are positive. It's like, that's my thing is that I want to give information out to people, introduce other people to people, Mm -hmm. uh, and help people along, which are all positive things. So my branding is about being positive and authentic. And so it may look sometimes like, well, well that, so that song, I have a song called Oh My God, Like Totally. Okay, it's not like, uh, you know, written by Shakespeare. Mm -hmm. But folks have told me hearing that song makes them happy and smile. That's positive. Mm -hmm. So it's like, that's, so I like your, th I, I'm with you on it completely. That's why we're friends, I think. Is I'm with that. I'm like, it's very much, everything fits into what i'm doing it may seem like i do a million different things but when you start stringing them together there there is a whole map it all it all works out 
And yeah. I know, I know, I know that. And I have a, you can't see it over there, but it's a whiteboard that I have all kind of stuff, just a, a tree of what I do. And mm -hmm. it's all mapped out. That's all you get. Yep. Uh, and that's, it's that, that's, a, that's like you say, you can see anything else. That's the, that's, that's the magic. The magic's over there. <laughs> right? No more magic for you. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But yeah, and, and like you mentioned, me being on TikTok, I mean, I just surpassed. 2,000 followers. Awesome. And I surpassed 80,000 likes. Wow. That's in two months. That's in two months. And my yeah. friend goes, James, you're doing this by just talking to people. Yeah. You haven't done any dances. You haven't done any challenges. It's you talking to people. And you've got to 80,000 likes. And I looked up my name on TikTok this morning. The hashtag James Lodge Jr., I think it's at 487,000. Wow. Nice. Yes, I do. And so and it goes back to just taking a platform and bending it to my will. I don't, I'm not doing it. I'm not going to do a dance challenge. I'm not going to do all this great. I have one video I'm juggling. Mm -hmm. that's, that's it. But again, that's positive, right? That's positive. So I decided to do it on, on that sub, since it's shameless self promotion. I have three series exclusively to TikTok, folks. One is called How to Get Super Organized in Under a Minute. The other one is called A Lot to Think About. And the other one's called a lot of spoken words. So I have those three, I, I kind of, I do those mixed in with other ones. And my three main topics that I post all the time about being left-handed, Star Wars, and being a Gen Xer. So those are kind of things that I post on there all the time. I get huge hits on those. <coughs> and, but I keep them rotated. So, that, so on TikTok, I decide to do my own way. So it's like TikTok's for kids, TikTok's this, well, it's a platform that people are watching, um, so why not? Caesar's on it too, folks. We have yes. to talks together. I see you get some, some of your see when he posts when he posts dog stuff. You know that's when he gets the big hits. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. So it, the the three series that you have are those uh, all in the same in your profile, or they're in multiple the different profiles, or how does that work? They're okay. So I have just one James uh -huh. on TikTok. They're all mm -hmm. the same profile. Just that you know when they're gonna pop up. And I just have them on there and I just, I, I rotate. So I'll do like the organizing one, life coaching one, a Star Wars one. Mm -hmm. Then I'll do uh, a lot of spoken word, a life coaching one, then being Gen X. So I yeah. I was trying to see, I was trying to see if I can find, that is TikTok guys. <laughs> TikTok. Um, this, is, as, this is a real recording as you can see. <laughs> yes, we're live. So, but, so anyways, that's what I do. That, I'm very much, uh, they're all exclusively on my page for TikTok. I have those series or not anywhere else. And now talking about making things happen, I'm announcing this to you guys listening to this right now. Uh -huh. I'm going to make a book out of my organizing series on TikTok. Nice. And that is awesome. That too. So it's like, they're, they're all going to feed each other. So it's all going to feed, feed the other. Um, but I decided to, better. my friend's on IG right now, he's doing an offshoot of an offshoot of his web series only on IGTV, his name is Tony Moore, Lounging with Tony. Tony is, is a series called, it's a series called Lounging with Tony, which is a, a interview show. Then he has a podcast called More Please, his last name is Tony Moore. And now he has um, Tell Me More, which is on IG. Mm -hmm. And so he, every day he's been coming out with three interviews a day, talking to celebrities, and it's a hit. And so it's just one of those things, it's kind of like, just, you know, try things out, do different things. And these platforms are out there. You know, I'm on LinkedIn. I post things on LinkedIn. I have things on Facebook. I have things on Twitter. I mean, I'm, I'm everywhere. You know, I'm everywhere you want me to be or not want me to be. I'm everywhere. Um, <laughs> so, I mean, and I post Instagram stories. You know, I do Instagram yeah. stories. They're very popular. People love them. They're all sad. You know, these are all sad right now because normally I go all over town, my story. Uh -huh. They're like, you can't go all over town right now. I can't. I said, it's about my house, my garden, and what I'm eating. Like, yeah. Yeah, well, there you go. There you have it. And, yeah. and, I, don't, and I don't know how long this will be, but, it, you know, hopefully not too long. I know. So, so, I'm doing, so, so, again, I'm adapting and changing and working with that, and people are doing that now. And so I think yeah. I say, and he does videos. Follow him at Cesar R. Espino on, on TikTok also. He's on there. Yep. Like his stuff. Bring him yes, up. Yes, like my Bring stuff. Subscribe. Subscribe. Yes, I, I, need, yeah. I need more followers. He's more followers. He does. He's more followers. Well, thanks for being on the show with me today and, and talking yeah. about life as an entrepreneur and what we're trying to do. Um, yeah, I really appreciate it. Yeah. I, know you, I know that you are. Also, mention your, your house stuff really quick. Mention what you're looking for. You're yeah, so, I, so I, I, again, I do part of what I do is real estate investing. So I uh, tend to um, 
uh, find properties that are distressed, you know, and it could be different, different situations, you know, either the, the family is going through some uh, very uh, hardship uh, situation. And so they need to sell their house pro uh, pretty fast. So I buy the house's cash. Um, and you know, I take them, I beautify them and I put them back in, into the market for the next family to come in and, and take on that. And then I also have a mentoring program for people that want to get into real estate investing and want to, uh, you know, get into doing that. Um, I have a program as a matter of fact, right now it's actually a perfect time to do it because you don't have to go see the house physically to, to, to put an offer or do any of that stuff. You can do everything, um, over the web and online. And so since we're confined to, you know, being in your house, this is actually a perfect time for you to get into that. So that's what I do right now. In, in terms of those things. So yeah. you want to contact you can't well actually tell people where they can find you on the interweb. Very easy. Just like James Lott Jr. everywhere. Caesar R. Espino everywhere. 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 Pretty much. So www.caesarrespino.com and it's actually Cesar C E S A R. So Cesar R. Espino.com. Yeah, can I can say because this doesn't have the extra No the the A, the, the a. Or a or yeah, yeah. Like that. yeah it's a little yeah. Short. Cesar but Yes, Cesar. Cesar is like Cesar Chavez. Cesar. Yes, there you go. That's Caesar salad. No, exactly. <laughs> CesarRSPito.com. And then you can find everything about me. My podcast, my books, everything. my real estate, everything. Everything, everything you want to know I don't know. Yeah, pretty, pretty soon I'll be, I'll be putting up the, the songs in there too. I got to download the links into that. Yeah, yeah. Yes, they're, they're yeah I got to do that. Like I said, March 30th, they will be released to the public at, for purchase and for streaming. They will be everywhere. It's by Larlo and uh, La Semana. They will be everywhere. I mean, I'm talking like Spotify, Pandora, Google Play, Apple. Nice. Everything will be everywhere, folks, everywhere. So when, uh, you, when, when you start driving, you got to put this song in your car. Yes, definitely. Like I said, folks are listening to it right now on my SoundCloud page for free, James Lott Jr. But as I always say to everybody, you can follow me where all James Lott Juniors are sold at James Lott Jr. on all social media platforms, literally across all boards. Um, if you are interested in a super organizer, I do have Super Organizer on Facebook and the Super O. It sounds like dirty, but it's not dirty on Twitter. <laughs> I could get the rest to organize, I could get the rest of the word. And then my shows, I mean, when you start start those two places and you'll find all of my podcasts. Um, but for all these videos. Go to um, James Lott Jr. No, sorry, just me, wrong person. Go to JLJ Media on YouTube and subscribe while you're there. And I have a playlist of all kinds of content from medical to entertainment and everything in between. A lot of help. I have, a, I have an actual website, a lot of help, uh, dot com. that's a lot with two T's, not one. Um, you can go there and see all kinds of, I, I'm, I am available for hire for uh, life coaching. Uh, virtual organizing, any kind of coaching. I can do over on, you know, I can do through Zoom, Skype, uh, FaceTime, you know, when it, when any kind of platforms, you can work on that. And we want everyone to stay safe. And yes. funny to stay sane. It's going to be okay, folks. It's going to be really, it's going to really be okay. It is. And yes. see you next time. Thank you.